Right now, we are hurtling through the 21st century, a time of uncertainty for our planet. Our population is swelling. We now have over 7 billion people living, breathing, and eating on this earth. We are producing more greenhouse gases than ever, and this is largely as a result of feeding our increasing numbers and what we are choosing to feed them. I'm Rebecca Felgate. Welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. Today, we are answering the much debated question of should we eat? animals. In order to cover the bases in this video, we are going to be looking at our historic relationship with eating animals, its impact on our health, our environment, and of course, its impact on our ethics. Stay tuned, because we do have an answer. One line of argument from carnivores and comfortable omnivores is that it is natural. Caveman ate animals to survive, and let's face it, we are animals too. Most animals eat animals, that's just the food chain for you. But now, as increasingly in intelligent beings that live in houses, that sleep in beds, that watch TV, that go to work, that earn money, and that pay for things in shops, surely we can no longer consider ourselves in the same league as our animal friends. The caveman ate animals at a time that there were less humans hunting, more animals in the wild, and much, much less choice of diet. That said, of course they ate things like fruit, vegetables, and nuts too. In fact, a caveman could feast off an animal for a long period of time. Even huge animals in the wild don't hunt daily. These days, in the United States of America alone, 108 billion animals are killed for food every year, with the average US citizen eating meat daily, totaling 125 kilograms of it each year. This isn't the same as hunting a wild animal to feed our family. We are now cultivating billions of animals for mass slaughter. As we mentioned, the population of the world is swelling, and we need to feed our people. The only problem is, is that it takes seven kilos of grain to make one kilo of beef. So really, we're trading in lots of one food source to make little of another. In other words, the billions of animals we rear for slaughter eat more than they actually produce. They also account for 8% of global human water consumption, and livestock are responsible for 18% of greenhouse gas emissions, not to mention that 70% of the cleared Amazon forest was done so to make space for more farming. So we can only expect all of the above numbers to rise. That kilo of beef we talked about produces 27 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions, whereas lentils, for example, create under 0.1 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions each year. In other words, if we just ate those 7 kilos of grain that went into making that 1 kilo of beef, we would have more food to feed people, and our planet's atmosphere would be cleaner. But what about protein? Meat is an excellent source of protein, which humans need as part of a healthy diet. Sure, but there is also a lot of protein in nuts, tofu, broccoli, spinach, lentils, the list goes on. Oh, and these things are much lower in fat too. Okay, but what about calcium? We might not want to eat animals, but we need the dairy industry for calcium, right? Well, it is a good source, but calcium can also be found in nuts, greens, and beans. Kale, for example, is jam-packed with calcium. It's true that while we are babies, we need our mother's milk, but beyond our childhood years, there have been countless studies that indicate that we no longer need milk. In fact, 65% of all humans on Earth have a reduced ability to digest lactose, a type of natural sugar found in milk. It isn't just milk making people sick. We can't exactly stomach raw meat either. Unlike the wild animals that both carnivores and omnivores cite as justification for our meat fueled diet, we actually don't have the teeth nor the stomach to eat raw meat. Finally, the main selling point for those who choose not to eat animals or animal products is that the meat farming industry is very cruel. If you think that the meat industry is anything like natural hunting within the animal kingdom, you are wrong. These animals do not live free lives before the misfortune of being hunted. They are bred to die. Birds are crowded into unsanitary sheds by the thousands, sometimes tens of thousands. They have no space, they stand in their own waste, and they are drugged to grow fatter. Male chicks are often cold because they don't lay eggs, and therefore are not useful to the farming industry. They are ground up alive in a disposal unit and tossed out in the garbage. An animal's life in the farming industry is filled with pain and the loss of family, and often disease. And it isn't just animals bred for meat that suffer. The process of extracting milk is cruel too. Cows are forcibly impregnated over and over again in order to keep them lactating. Fish feel incredible pain as they suffocate out of the water, often with decompression pushing their stomachs into their mouths. We 
actually farmed so many of certain types of fish that they're now almost extinct. Ask yourself, if you eat meat and you're an animal lover, if all of these animals have consciences, if they can all feel pain, what is the difference between the animals in your home and the animals on your plate? So why, if it is so cruel, do we do it? Well, to put simply, we have been taught to disassociate what we're eating from the reality of how it got on our plate. McDonald's advertising budget is one of the biggest in the world. You are being force fed meat, not through your mouth, but through your eyes. The meat farming industry has grown so ginormous that it doesn't want to face the inconvenient truth that it is not economically or ethically sound, and we are so used to consuming it in our diet that we don't want to admit that it needs to be scaled way back at the very least. Of course, to a lot of people, meat is absolutely mouth-wateringly delicious, but would we think so if we really considered what was on our plate and the process it had to go through to get there? Meat isn't the only thing out there that tastes good. so. Should we eat animals? I'm not arguing that at one point in our development as humans, there is a necessity for animals in our diet, but these days there are so many options that are kinder to our planet, our health, and to our animal friends. I want to answer that we should not eat animals, but I don't want to preach, especially when not perfect myself. It is up to you to make your own decision based on the facts, but not by mentally deprogramming your understanding of how what is on your plate got there. On a personal level, I made a decision to try a vegan diet at the beginning of this year. I'm a huge foodie and have definitely enjoyed plenty of steaks in my time, but I just couldn't justify my choices anymore. It has been a real struggle and yeah, I've had some slip ups, but as a result, I'm fully meat and animal product free several days a week and I'm working on the rest. For now, I think we better wrap up this episode of Life's Biggest Questions. Please do leave your thoughts and discussion points in the comments section down below. And remember, a good argument is one poised without aggression. For now, now, stay curious, stay alert, and remember to never, ever, ever stop questioning.